Now YouTube is absolutely full of anglers telling you about magic bait, magic rigs, magic tricks. But sometimes good old fashioned watercraft is everything and using your eyes can be the key to catching more carp this winter. So let's slip this one back and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. So finding carp in the winter can be an absolute nightmare. 90% of the fish can be in 10% of the lake. However, by using your eyes, sometimes you can get a bit of a layup. Now I've been popped to Redlands today. I'll just spin around. I don't know if you can see that. I'll just zoom in. I've managed to, as I'm driving in, spot out right there. Like a little shoal of carp, there were some bubbles. See that one there's just topped. Now that at this time of year is an absolute gift. And if like me, you just wanted to get out after the Christmas break. I've been a little bit housebound over Christmas, I've got to say. Feeling a bit sorry for myself, a bit ill. I've just got to come and put a bend in the rod. So I've come here to Meadowlands this afternoon. And as I'm driving on, I'm thinking, where am I going to fish? Where am I going to fish? I just want to try and catch a couple of carp on a method feeder. And I've been presented to me with a gift like that, which is pretty much where the fish are going to be. And I wouldn't have ever seen them fish if I hadn't actually taken the time to look. So without further ado, I think we should get some kit together and uh, try and catch one or two of these Medellin's carp. Right, so how am I going to go about trying to catch one of these carp? I mean, it's literally a January afternoon and I've just, I literally got an hour to kill. Just got an hour to do a bit of fishing. And like I said, I've been presented with a gift. Like the fish has pretty much shown me where they are. Now this is a good area anyway. I'm in peg 36 on Warren Pool, which wins a lot of matches. However, when there's nobody on the lake, like it is the situation today, the fish obviously move around a lot more. They're not penned in by match anglers, like what happens in matches. And actually finding the fish is so important because like I said in the intro, 90% of the fish can be in 10% of the water. And it looks to me like there's a massive shoal of carp out there. <clears throat> and it might not be obvious. Like when you go to a fishery, if you're presented with a flat, calm day like this, you might not see them head and shoulder, you might not see them jump out or anything like that. But what you might see is little tiny bubbles, big patches of bubbles sometimes, but generally just little bubbles. And that can be a telltale sign that there's some carp in the area. Now what I'm gonna to use to catch it, or hopefully catch it, I've got a pretty standard uh, banjo feeder set up. I've just got the, the, the little tiny one, 30 grams, because I didn't know how far I needed to cast. I may have to chuck 40 meters, and I wanna be able to do it with a bit of accuracy. If I see a fish bubbling up or fizzing up, I wanna be able to almost guide that feeder exactly where it needs to go. So if I've got plenty of weight on there, 30 grams, I can put that in quite nicely and quietly, but it gives me a bit of control too. I haven't gone for a big feeder to start with. Um, I'm just gonna almost treat it like, like straight lead fishing almost. I'm just gonna put a little tiny package of pellets right amongst those fish, or hopefully, wherever I've seen a few fish, and we'll see if we can catch them. Now, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna load it up, and I'm just gonna put, I'm not using a mole because I don't want a mount in a bait. I'm literally just gonna chuck out, time my cast, and give each area like 10 minutes. So I just want maximum attraction in a tiny little area, so I've just got, Banjo, I've just put a, a firm little layer in the bottom and then over the top I'm just going to put another little slightly softer layer which will hopefully break down and that conceals my hook bait nicely. I've just got fishery pellets on there and then I've got a, one of these little jobbies on in a little pale orange which looks a nice colour to me. 6mm I've gone for, size 14 hook. Now let's get this in amongst where I think I can see a few carp. Now, as I said, it may be that you don't see carp, you might just see an odd fizzer or whatever, and that's what, but today I've been looking at, there's a, there's a carp actually showing themselves as well as fizzing, so that's a bit of a gift. So let's just put this on them. Right on them, that. And let's just see if we catch one. Because like I say, I just want to get a bend in the rod. I'm not, not interested in breaking any records or anything like that. I just want to catch a few fish after having a bit of a chest infection and a bit feeling a bit sorry for myself over over Christmas. So let's get that line under. Yeah normally I'd, I'd do that by going chub fishing or whatever but the rivers are eight miles wide at the moment. So rather than go out chub fishing for an hour I've decided to come to Medlands which is pretty local for me. I've got that line under. Now I'm gonna 
like I said, I'm going to look for liners and stuff, but I'm going to set a, a timer on my phone. Let me just set that. Ten minutes I'm going to go for, which I think is long enough to for a carp to find that. So a ten minute timer, that's set. Most important, get one of these out. And let's hope that there's a fish there willing to feed because we're right in amongst them. Got a lovely little setup. Like I say, this is not obviously in a match. It would be you confined to within your swim, but the same rules apply. It might be that fish are fizzing in certain areas, and you can chuck to them with that, like a bomb and bread or a bomb and corn, or even a little feeder setup like this. Or it may be that. Um, you see them topping because sometimes on windy days obviously you can't see them fizzing so look out for signs of them breaking the surface they're not if they're in front of you or you're near a few carp they will tend to give themselves away by that I mean show where they're actually at right so the wait begins but first of all I just want to say this is me here first new video 2024 thanks to everyone who took the time to subscribe and watch last year really appreciate it and also i want to talk about the most one of the most recent videos i did just before christmas where i tried fuca ground bait certainly raised a few eyebrows i think and i think a lot of people were like torn on the idea there was mm, i'm gonna say 60 percent of the guys commenting were negative towards it 20% were a bit undecided and then 20% were probably quite positive about the idea of the Fuca ground bait. And I must admit, I'm somewhere in the middle. I, get, I totally get the concept. I think the concept's brilliant. I think that, like today, for example, if I was, I had some fishery pellets, so I managed to soak them before I come. But if I didn't, I could literally just grab a bag of that ground bait and I'd have been fishing just as quick. The couch is showing itself out there. So I've actually started a bit short of where I think the bulk of the fish are, which is quite a good thing to do because it gives me somewhere else to cast to. But if I'd have just not had them pellets and I just wanted an hour's fishing, I could have just grabbed that, a bag of that ground bait and gone fishing. So I, I get the concept. I, granted, I felt like the ground bait was a bit too coarse, but Fuka actually did get in touch with me after it because they were surprised I did the video and sort of said, look, we have actually... Uh, made it a little bit finer and um, a touch damper and stuff. So they are actively working on their products. So fair play, if that is the case. But yeah, certainly the jury's out for a lot of people, but I think it was uh, a video well worth doing because um, a lot of guys are using it now. So, okay, so there's no bites on the first chuck. It's just reload <clears throat> and see if we can't try a slightly different area because those, those fish are just showing a little bit further away now as predicted really as soon as you start casting to fish that shoulder up in winter naturally they push away from you it's just that because they're on on and near the surface like this you can actually see it happening but obviously if they're underwater you wouldn't they're very active i'd be amazed if you don't catch one but this is winter fishing so you never know they've gone quite a long way you might not even get to them this is why you need like a, a little dense feeder like this because that becomes a little bomb like a little missile and it gives you the, the range to cast it so i can chuck this nicely close in if i need to but i can also launch it if i have to so let's just give it a bit of a launch and just see what happens. It's right among them, that is. Right, set a timer again. Cross my leg and out for a big, big pull round. Love a nice tow round. They're generally really good fish in this lake, so if we do get one, 
be wicked. There we go. Taken a couple of casts to find them. But we've got one. It feels like a cat, this one. And it just goes to show you that this sort of winter carp fishing can be really simple. Like, incredibly simple in fact. Like, location is everything. And simple tactic, like a little hybrid or a banjo feeder or even a method feeder with a nice little wafter on, nice bright one. Chucked in the right place. We'll get your action, even on, you know, January days like this is. You don't have to do anything special. But using your eyes, looking for the, where the fish are, is so important. Because you can't get bites if you're not where the fish are. Simple as that. And it's not like the summer where the fish are actively feeding and looking for bait. It's just not, that's just not what, what's going on here. I don't think it's a massive one, but it's a carp. which, like I say, after being stuck at home, is a bonus. Do I have one more cast? Wait, the first proper fish of 2024. There we go. Oh, lovely. Nice to catch one, that's for sure. And just goes to show you, like I say, simple tactics. That was on a little white wafter. And we're, like I say, we're not trying to build a swim or anything like that. We're just trying to, almost like opportunist fishing, really. Just trying to catch any fish that come along, really. It's not like the summer when you can build a peg. We're relying on these beauties. We're relying on going and trying to find them. So there you go. Nice little wind and fish on the banjo. Spotting those fish on the surface was the perfect giveaway that there was some about. And it was just a case of us finding one that was willing to feed. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We'll see you again on the next video.